can't support another team. If we sell a player, he's gone. I still love Sunderland. You know, I'm, I'm, it's not a, a one-person team or whatever. You know, I love the club as a whole. My mother supported them. She'd been gone since she was my age, and uh, she went by herself. And uh, as I got to the age, you know, about 10, 11, she says, oh, do you want to go? And she was trying to force us to go, and I was like, no, no, I'll put it off for months. And eventually she got me a ticket, and I, I can honestly not remember what my first match was. But uh, I was just hooked from the moment I went, and I really enjoyed it. To me, you, you're born to support. You didn't change halfway through your life, and that you support where you're born and stick with it through good and bad, didn't you? It's almost too painful to remember how optimistic everyone was in the middle of the last season. The club was sitting comfortably mid-table, although their home record hadn't been good. Wimbledon, however, were on a roll. 18 games without being beaten. I fancy was getting a penalty the day off. Big Vinny will probably bring one of us down. We'll get a penalty. <laughs> so it's got to be spot on. What do you reckon to the match today then? What predictions have you got? I think we'll win. It'll be a pretty close out thing, but uh, I think one or two of our fours might be a bit too quick for them. And they'll get through and get a goal. You haven't won at home for a while, like, have you? We haven't, no, but uh, things will come right, mate. Great faith in the club and the manager and the players. <laughs> I, I ain't got a problem about us winning the battle. Honestly, I think we'll win the battle. Any time you get it, get it down and play short, sharp football, you kill them. You kill them. So everything's short and sharp, quick passing, which is different class at, and they won't be able to live with you. And if you're in trouble and they're squeezing, stay on side, diags down the side. Oh. Yeah. All right, come on, let's go. Right. You still win them tackles, though? Bowley, race. Come on, son, a bit of magic, come on. At 41, Peter Reid has done it all. He's played in FA Cup finals, the World Cup, and before Sunderland, he was manager at Manchester City. Three points today, and we're up but even he couldn't have predicted how tough this season was going to be. Come on, it's all right. Come on, Eddie. Stop Come on, Eddie. boys. Eh? Come on, Eddie. Come on. That's fucking shite. And it's not about fucking tactics and them being great players. It's about fucking arsehole, which they've got fucking more on the fucking day. So fucking get on with it. i tell you what that is, fucking men against fucking boys all over the fucking park. You're fucking weak as piss, they are. Fucking weak as piss. Best performance against you this season, Peter. <clears throat> the first 45 min minutes, um, it was men against boys. So I think that might be a yes. <laughs> 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 Thank you. <laughs> Little did Sunderland know that Wimbledon was a team who would come back to haunt them. It's been fantastic, though. I mean, to go to a place like Old Trafford, Anfield, Highbury, with everything that goes Erasmus has with playing in the Premier League, that has been absolutely unbelievable. And someone says, oh, we're playing Man United Saturday. It's got the Man United aura around it, and it on Man U type thing. And there is that added excitement of playing you know, against them sort of teams. Just to make you I'm knackered here. Keep it going, just keep going the effort. Can't get the effort up again, though. Huh? I think you'd give me a to All clubs complain about injuries, but both Sunderland's new Premier League signings were out of action before they'd really got started. What's it feel like when you wake there? Not too bad. Goalkeeper Tony Corton was bought pre-season from Man United, but after only a handful of games in a match against Southampton, he broke his leg. It snapped in five places. Stay in the brace. For how long? Until I see you again in a month's time. Oh. You said a month to six weeks. Yeah. But... I've took you religiously at your work. Yes. There. Brace on. Yeah. Nothing malicious in the challenge. He'd got to go for the ball, I'd got to come out. Um, but I didn't, you know, realise to the extent of I'd got so many fractures. You know, I thought oh, I was done. I broke, just broke my leg because, of the, you know, the main sort of pain was coming from my tibia, high up, you know, just just below the knee. Um, weren't until they went to pick me up to put me on the stretcher that the whole 
bottom part of my leg, you know, just, you know, just screamed out in agony. And my fibula had gone and my tibia was broken for. New striker Niall Quinn was also injured. Although he was past his best, the ex-Irish international was the club's most expensive ever signing. I got signed for £1.3 million. Um, I came in, I walked into the dressing room on the first day. I only knew one or two of the players, David Kelly, Tony Coton. And I could see the players probably looking at me thinking, well, we've heard he's half decent, you know, let's, you know is he, is he going to do it for us? And I, even though I had a pretty decent start, by no means, I didn't set the world on fire, but I felt it was just beginning to come, but then suddenly it was, it was gone. I was injured and, and had a very bad injury and looked to be out for um, the rest of the season. So that was a hard thing. I then had to come mentally get, a, get myself attuned to that the players here still don't know what I'm capable of. Um, and that's the spur that's been keeping me going all along. I mean, you have bad days and, and there are times when I don't think like this and you think, oh my God, am I ever going to get back? But um, there's a little bit left that I still have to prove and that's, that's probably more important to me. I mean, I could easily say, oh, I want to do it for my family, I want to do it for my kids. They're all lovely cliches, but they're not. Nice and gentle now. Good girl. There are two sets that I want to um, get the respect from. One is the dressing room and one is myself. If I get one, I get the other. One thing is going for Niall is that he looks like he'll play this season. You know, I've got no chance. Sunderland used to be famous for its shipyards. They've all gone now. But in return, the town was granted city status. A city without a cathedral. But not for long. This was millionaire chairman Bob Murray's dream. A 42,000-seater stadium, twice the size of Roker Park. Built on the site of an old coal mine, it's a towering monument to a local lad made good. Every day, devout fans made their pilgrimage to watch it rise. It seems insane, but even on Christmas Day, they came to pay the respects and dream of future glories. I think it's the biggest statement the club's done in a hundred years, and I think that uh, it says everything about the potential of the club that must be realised in the future. And over the next decade, there'll be success at this club that hasn't been seen for over 40 years. This club has never finished in the top half of the Premier League or its equivalent for 42 years, and that's a long time. This club needs to compete at the highest level and it needs to compete permanently. Here was a team who hadn't been in the Premiership more than five minutes, building the second biggest ground in the whole league. The risk of humiliation for Bob Murray was enormous. No one outside the club really believed he could fill it. But Bob had undying faith in Sunderland's followers, even if they hadn't always had faith in him. He said Peter Reid's rekindled his enthusiasm for the club. What he means is he stopped them from being relegated, he took them up, and the financial re, you know, reward that's coming into the club, he can actually see them making some money now. And obviously with the new stadium um, and being in the Premiership, Sky, the money Sky's going to appear, the pay you view, possibly that's going to come on next year. You know, he's just looking at the bottom line at the end of the day. Bob Murray's not interested in Southern Football Club. I'll tell you that now. I mean, eight million's not a lot of money to put aside for players, and yet he's putting all this money forward for his new stadium. And I think he, be, I think he should concentrate on the team first, rather than the stadium, and rather than floating Sunderland on the stock exchange. We've achieved Premier League status, which uh, is the only place to be, of course, in, in, the, in the Premier League. We're in the process of moving stadium, which is a, a once in 100 years uh, situation. And to ensure that, that all that goes smoothly and we can take advantage of those two, uh, those opportunities, um, uh, a listing on the, on, the, on the stock exchange ensures that we have the financial strength and ability to, to achieve our aspirations. Morning, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks very much for coming. The reason for our press conference today is to discuss the flotation 
on the full market. Sunderland will be the fourth fully listed football club and it's rubbing shoulders with Manchester United, Spurs and Leeds United. The float will inject an eight-figure capital sum into the business and it will greatly widen the share ownership. We will use the proceeds as follows. Three million will replace some bank facilities, 2.5 million to finance the stadium fit out and we will also invest in player acquisition to secure our premiership status and more importantly to be able to compete with the best. Quick to seize a photo opportunity, Bob and John took the press to the new stadium to announce the club's share price, £5.85. Hello, from here. I'm a football person, I always will be. I leave the business side of it to my directors and the financial directors that we've got in. I mean, I'm purely football. Every game I've been involved in in football since I was a young lad, I've wanted to win. And I've got a burning desire to win. Sometimes you can't and you don't win. But no, no added pressure will be coming from flotations or financial, not at all. I just look at it purely three points for, for uh, getting us up that Premier League. Sunderland Football Club floated on the stock market on Christmas Eve. It was a huge success. The share price quickly rose to a staggering £7.50 and Bob's 52% share in the club was now worth more than £25 million. Peter Reid's shares were worth around £3 million. A Merry Christmas to you all. Who would have thought that Sunderland would have been on a full listed market? But such is our business. Our turnover has gone from 7 million to 13 million this year, and next year it'll be well into the mid 20s. And that is a tremendous growth for any business. And we're a 115 year old, our business, yet we've got tomorrow's product. And with Sky and Peerview and all these things in the Premier League, it's a tremendous opportunity we have to make a big success both on and off the field and people want to invest in it. Did you buy any shares? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Aye. I would have to buy shares in the club. I mean, I couldn't, uh, I couldn't let that go. So did my daughter, actually. She bought shares in it. So I hope my advice was good. <laughs> oh, yes, I bought shares. I'm not telling you how much, but I bought shares. <laughs> By early January, despite their injuries, Sunderland was still holding on to a mid-table position and everyone reckoned those icy winds from the North Sea would give the team an advantage over those soft southerners, Arsenal. It was forecasted ground, I've got seven below freezing. So we had to take precautions, you know, make sure everything was covered up perfect. You must take your eyes off for a second. I'm going to go back across the day now, mind. That's it. I'll go round it and back again. That finishes the day off. Let's face it. Arsenal are everything Sunderland aspires to be. The rich, never been relegated, and every other player's an international. They also beat Sunderland 2-0 at Highbury when the referee sent two players off and Peter Reid got a hefty fine for arguing from the dugout. So when do you have to move to the new stadium? At least Bob's new stadium would be bigger than theirs. Oh, right, so we'll be ready for four weeks to fit it out. Yeah. What will be just the total capacity? 42. Straight on. And how many seasons are going to hold us for the Well, we've got a commitment yes. of uh, just over 10,000, as it yesterday. We went right. over 10,000. Right. You stand guard here. Make sure nobody goes in who shouldn't go in. That's right, see, it's only the right people getting in after getting in, you know. Yes. Hello. Hello, how are you? How are you? Are you going up all right? Yes. Okay, okay. I'll see you after. Okay. Yes. I've been here about 10 years, but I was downstairs before 
You always been a Simmons fan? Huh? You always been a Simmons supporter? Yeah, about 50 years, I think. My dad used to. My dad brought me the game in 1946. Now, shall I please? Has it been a tough one? Up to now, yes. I don't see it. I've just got to watch the goals, you know. That's the main thing. Not many, people do, not many people do get to see much of the match round here, do they? Well, the thing is, um, you've got a job to do, and uh, that's it. You know, it's the hub of the club, this. I've got my mate here at the company. Well, I'll tell you now, personally, I don't like the short passing game. I like the old fashioned game better than. Uh, there's no individual skill in this game, right? You just pass the ball before anybody. Well, before you had, you had the winger beating two or three men and crossing and a big centre forward. But... Hey! 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 Now, listen, I'm not daft, men. And the boat to use ain't giving us enough. You ain't giving us up. And you, I don't know whether you think I'm fucking stupid, but I'll tell you what, you're not trying to give it to us. You're not getting it, you're not holding it up. You're jumping like that. Hey, back into it. I, I see bear camp on his toes. I see run, I see when Mason's up there on his toes, you know what I see us? And when the ball's into feet, you know what I see? Stretch it. <laughs> Instead of your body there, and get your body there and make them kick you. Because he ain't seen it. I tell you what's been poor. It has been poor. And don't look at me as though I'm fucking that. It has been poor. The most important thing on that pitch is that football. You get that football and you hold it for us because we can't get out. And that's a problem we've got. The only problem we've well, not the only one, but I'll tell you what, we're working hard all over. We've got to stick up there to get us out. If we pass it, we'll beat anyone. So I need that belief out there. Because I'm fucking telling you, there's internationals and everything, you're as good as them. You're as fucking good as them. You show in holes, you show in the middle of the park, you handle that football and you beat them. But I'll tell you what, I don't give two fucks whether we win, lose, or draw. But what I want for 45 minutes is us getting hold of it all over the fucking pitch. That is that's the best result for the season. Don't worry about that. That's a great result. Hey, bear in mind where they fucking are as well, that one. Yeah. Finish smashing all the good day. Difficult game. It's a game I didn't think we'd win. When you look at the injuries there. So, plenty of good stories to talk about. If you look at that. If you look at that. It's Colton, Quinn, Scott, Ball. Stewart, Agnew, possibly Ray. I mean, and I'm, I know Arsenal were missing right. Championship of the world. Give a kid this day, but and you two front men, uh, Mullen 22 and Bridges 18, who comes off with an injury. So that's a bonus. I know they got a man sent off, but it's still a great result. Oh, it's made my week. It's made my, honestly, it's made my week. Um, it's just, it's brilliant. If you support the team, you support them with passion, it's hard to describe, you know, there hasn't a back your neck stand up, you know, you feel physically better and, you know, you might be full of cold. And then the score and you're like, whoosh, you know, you feel better, all, you know. If you could bottle that, you'd make good money, you know. It all seemed too good to be true. Sunderland had beaten one of the top teams in the country and every day the city's newest landmark looked more and more spectacular. This season was all about pride and surely Bob Murray Stadium would be the envy of every team in the Premier League. And of course, with Sunderland supporters in full voice, guarantees a tremendous atmosphere. The club, the club was quick to take advantage of the mood by encouraging supporters to book their season tickets for the new stadium before it was too late. I mean, they're obviously coming in below us, and we'll be looking down on them. Mm. But there'll be nobody in here in the view on the pitch. That's right. Yeah. Especially when you pay nearly £2,000. Yes. Well, can we hold those four? OK, so you want to take those four then? That one, that one, that one, that one. Yeah. yeah. We met in Actually, here, met in here. When, it, when it was the Black Cat Club in 1966. <laughs> I met my husband in this actual room. <laughs> 
used to be a club then with a stage and a drummer and a, club. and a big bar along the bottom here. And we all used to sit in the corner. We all used to travel on John Tenick's number one bus. And that we all met up as a crowd. And then we all used to gather in that bottom corner. just in the, And then the crowd got bigger and bigger. And then he wandered in one night. And I, I was telling the pens, I, used to, I worked for the Supporters Association. And we used to do the bingo and everything then. And I was selling the pens. I sold one to him. <laughs> 30 years, th uh, 25 years later. The moral of the story is don't tell anyone a pen. <laughs> don't tell anyone a pen in the Black Cat Club. <laughs> The club also offered the fans a unique opportunity. For £25, they could have a brick bearing their name placed in the walls of the new stadium. You know, this is the next generation, you see. Right. How many will want? I want two. You want two? I want one. That's three. Look, are you getting how many? I'm getting four bricks. He's getting four. That's seven. How many are you getting out? Two. Nine. How about Sean? How many are you getting, Sean? One. Ten. Ten. What? Fell off a lane. As an added incentive, you could have your photograph taken with the previous season's championship trophy. It's at times like these you realise Premier League football can be a licence to print money. One time, I mean, it, the commercial side of a football club was very, very small, and I think it's over the last seven years that it's really started to, to snowball. I would honestly say that 50% of the club's income comes from the commercial side. Being in the Premier League is all about money. A club that plays against the best teams in the land attracts local businessmen who want to impress clients and friends with a glass of champagne and an exclusive seat in an executive box. Oh, good morning. Is it possible to speak to Andy Graham, please? Yes, sir. Andy Graham. Oh, good morning, Andy. My name's Jill. I'm calling on behalf of Sunderland Football Club. Hi, Jill. Hi. The reason I'm calling is, and uh, no doubt you'll be aware, we're building a new stadium. Yeah. I'm wondering if you do any sort of corporate hospitality at all? Yes. Yeah. Cli client entertain? Would you be interested? One of our marketing executives is actually popping out around the area. Would you be interested if she actually came out to see you? Yeah. We've got 54 boxes. None of the suites have got any names yet. Right. It's suite A. This will hold, it's got 450 people on there, but to, for comfort reasons, we've kept that to 400. Right. Included in there <coughs> will be match sponsors, board sponsors, associate sponsors and they're £2,000 a package, but that is our top of the range. Right. And the champagne reception, things like that. Yeah. If you wanted a room that you wanted to just entertain 30 guests every week or 30 staff, then and you, can, you could actually decorate the room Good. as you want to. Mm -hmm. I think from that point of view, a box would give us more flexibility. flexibility. Yeah. Totally agree. Yeah. I'll, I'll just let you have a look at the people that have actually taken boxes with us at, at the moment. There's a 5,000 non-returnable deposit that we ask for. Yeah. OK. Great. Right. That's very good, doesn't it, in that regard? Mm -hmm. You know, the basic Joe public who stands on the terraces, he's not bringing a lorry into the ground. He might buy a pie in the ground and a programme, and that's it. They're not really bothered about him now, are they? They're going towards corporate facilities and stuff where you obviously need the money in the club, but one day that will not be there. Them three points could probably turn out to be the best three points we've won this season. Arsenal, one of the top teams in the league, uh, they tried the physical business with it, it didn't work, we got stuck into them and the squad's down to the bone now and look at the team we had out on Saturday, we'll come away with three. I mean the boss is up there playing a bit uh, head tennis and whatever. It's wait and see time with Peter who he's going to bring in, but it's, uh, he's, he's crying for a midfield player and a striker right now. He supports the interest in Lee Clark from Newcastle. Uh, I'm happy if he comes here. I'll be happy if Gaza comes here. I'm not particularly bothered what Newcastle fans are going to say about it. At least we know the club's looking for class players now. There's never a dull moment at Sunderland, is there? Never a dull moment. It's no secret, we, we have made inquiries about Paul Gascoigne and then I'm sure that there are other clubs that have done the same. Um, we've said all along we want to bring quality players 
into the club uh, to, to, to take the club forward and uh, we're very mindful that we, we one want to retain Premiership status this season but we also want to take advantage uh, when we move to the new stadium to, to be able to hopefully move up the Premiership table and start to start to challenge for a, for a bit of silverware. If you stand still in football, you don't stand still. You fall behind. You've got, always got to keep up with the game and improve your squad. I mean, the players, I've got a smashing bunch of players, great atmosphere, but everybody knows in football you've always got to improve, and that's what, I'm, I've, that's what I've tried to do from day one, but I have, at this moment in time, the financial clout to do it. But I won't be panicked, I'll do it in my own time. On the players, I think I'll improve the squad. The next day, the prayers of the fans were answered. Peter had found his new striker, Ronan Harazzi, an Israeli international. Assistant manager Paul Bracewell broke the news to the eager press. He's a forward. Forward, yeah, striker. Through the middle striker. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How old is he? He's 25. Um, I think his flight this morning was on like uh, 10, oh, I think he's on a 10, a 10 flight this morning uh -huh. to get down there. So. Can you clear one thing up, Paul? Because you know the, the business with the Department of Employment and mm. the work permit, etc. I haven't got the Department of Employment, uh, you know, the PFA involved. They haven't said yes yet. No, because, I mean, we, he obviously had to do a medical, so that's the reason why he's come over right. to do the medical. Uh, I mean, the, the tra any transfer is subject to, subject yeah, to, uh -huh. to a medical, uh -huh. obviously, and a work permit as well. Uh -huh. I mean, so if you were signing a lad in England, you'd have to get a, you'd have to pass a medical anyway. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. The latest position on that is you're still waiting for the work permit. Yeah, we're still waiting for that and we'll, we'll have a good idea this afternoon from the results from his scan and see how he goes. Would you be able to play him in the resis? Once again, it's another... It's like the, the rest of the boys. Yeah, you've got to see if you can get permission. And, but I know the lad's keen to play. Yes. With prices sky high at home, Peter had looked abroad for cheaper players. The high-scoring Harazzi seemed a bargain at around half a million pounds. But first, the Israeli had to undergo a routine medical check. The MRI scan is basically done as a pre-signing screening, really, of um, the major lower limb joints, ankles, knees, hips, usually. And we're basically looking for any internal abnormalities of the joints that may affect players, sort of physical fitness, ability to play, that type of thing. I suppose you could view it as a, a kind of 12,000 mile service. The news was not good. So this previous stress fracture, which you can see just here, basically his fifth. This is, um, this is his first metatarsal. So it should look pretty much like this. But this one's got a lot of bright areas within it, which is a lot of a marrow edema. And he's still got a visible fracture line, so it's not completely healed yet. Um, there's, if you look at the x-ray, there's certainly callus formation around there. Mm -hmm. I don't know how old this fracture is, um, but it's it's not fully healed at the moment. That's probably just an effect that he's been carrying on playing at it. So that's a potential problem. Now you see the problem here. All this distortion is due to that metal pin in his, in his knee. He's arrived. Um, we were under the impression he had a, a small pin in his femur. And when, <laughs> when we looked at the x-rays, it isn't a small pin, it's about 18 inches long. It's a huge nail in his femur. It's so over. Quite a huge <laughs> nail. <laughs> we're a little bit concerned. He's also come with a, a repaired uh, cartilage in his left knee. <laughs> And, uh, Rumour has it, it's Robocop in disguise. <laughs> <laughs> and an old stress fracture in his foot. No. So he's, and other uh, than that, he's as fit as a fiddle. Oh, nice, fine. <laughs> the manager tends to choose these players. Ooh. We've been advised to pull out on medical grounds, which is disappointing for the player, obviously, because he's a young man, 26 years old and obviously disappointing for the club and me because uh, I thought he could have done a job for us. So what, you got, so what does that mean you've got to do now? <laughs> That's a good question. We've tried a, a, number of, uh, a number of avenues, we've inquired about quite a number of, a number of players um, and uh, there's, we've just got to keep trying. We, we just, 
I think the, the, the whole of football at the moment, there's not a great deal of movement. Um, everyone is after quality players and th there's not a lot out there. This was an unhappy progress, week for the club. Yeah. Strong it's winds had delayed building at the new stadium. We're saying whereabouts are we as per the original contract, contract programme? We're probably about a week, week and a couple of days, no. mostly due to some, some weather that we've had recently. No. Uh, we have taken provision <laughs> behind. <yeah. laughs> we, we have taken some provision of an additional crane that arrived on the on the Saturday to speed at work on the west stand, which was always the intention anyway. Yeah. So that should help. So well, what steps are you taking to get back on programme then? That's exactly yeah, what that is. That yeah, is that's yeah. part of it, yeah. We always expected some poor weather at this yeah. time of the year, but uh, this is this is the effect of it. Yeah. You come down and build one down there. I mean, you what yeah. what bad weather did you build in your contingency? There's some, pl there's some float into that, yeah. <coughs> we're so not, we're not as bad we're as what this looks like. It's a 59 week programme. I, I know. And within there, they're I building know, a contingency. I know what you're saying. I know what you're saying. Right, I, but at the end of the day, you're talking about a, a hundred quid. Sir, Sir John. They've, they've lost eight days. On, Which on, they can make up. I on on steel work, right? Yeah. That doesn't mean to say in those eight days they weren't doing anything. Right, they, 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 were, they were concentrating on other areas. I know, I know all that. I know, I, I, I know the answers, and I know the official answers. Those you. guys don't say there's been a problem, and uh, I, I think know, it's but they, it's the guy up there that causes the problem, isn't it? Yeah. No, I'm, I'm it's risk assessment, Fred. But we'll, we'll, we're all right. Well, that's what I'm talking about. Yeah, <laughs> we're all right. <laughs> don't, don't, don't worry. Don't worry. There's too many, too many what ifs. Yeah. Do it. Right. Good afternoon, Sunderland Football Club. Susan speaking. I shall try the line for you, his calling. Thank you. It was hard to believe that this would be the last season played at Roger Park. It seemed almost cruel to pull it down just a year short of its centenary. But it was time to move on, although the people who'd stood here would never be forgotten. We've got to take turf from here. Well, we're not got to, we are. For the sake of the people that's got that shit spread on the ground, so we're taking uh, turf up to put them in the new stadium, which would be, which is great. Like it's a regular thing, you know. I just get them spread around the pitch. But I think there's going to be a new system at the the new stadium. You know, they're going to have a special place for to put the ashes there. Like. We eat, sleep, and drink something. You know, it's our beloved club. You know, and that's it. Like, I mean, if we're in the fourth division, I would think no different of them. It's just something that's, you know, from when you were born, I suppose, really, you know, from taking things in, it was sun and sun and football, and that's the way you were brought up. Even when we played sometimes on the Saturday, we used to dart in the last five or ten minutes if we were playing along Seaburn and the pitches that was there then. We used to dash back in and get in, and if we saw the last few minutes, we'll, we'll, you know. But I mean, I've got visions, when you were looking around the ground, you could see people getting passed over the heads, it was just one mass of people. You know, and, and people, if they were faint or anything, you just used to pass them over there to come down. <laughs> and now there's people waiting on the track of them coming down. You know, and that, that, was, that was life. You know, there was nothing else. And it was tremendous. I'd love to see them days back where the place is crammed solid, you know. And then you get the atmosphere and it's brilliant, you know. Away to Aston Villa. Even this far into the season, the supporters were still excited by the glamour of the Premier League. They'd been to Highbury, Old Trafford, and now Villa Park. Gone forever were the days of South End's Roots Hall or Grimsby's Blundell Park. Or so they hoped. How many matches do you, do you go to, the away games? Uh, I'll go to more or less every single one. And I think 90% of the people on the bus today will be more or less the same as me in every single game. People's addicted to alcohol, people's addicted to drugs. And to me, there should be something like for a football fan because it's the same phenomenon, it's a drug. I, I've been at work one day, a few years ago, a number of years ago, and somebody says, oh, someone's got a game tomorrow night. I went, no, they haven't. And for some reason, I'd missed it. They were playing a friendly. Next day, I had a day off. I'm away, I'm away to the match. And to me, I didn't have to think twice about it. It's like people had to have a drink. They cannot refuse it. I cannot refuse going to a football game. I've, I've got a gun, you know? I'm, it's just something I've got to do. What happened to you? Um, and the Castle United fan buried off uh, with an argument over football, unfortunately. But 
that's that's life, I suppose. Who left that you cousins before us standing there? The team arrived at Aston Villa confident after a three-match unbeaten run. The win over Arsenal had been followed by a one-all draw at Leicester and a nil-nil draw to Blackburn. But without a new striker, Peter Reid was struggling to find fresh ways to shuffle his pack. Bells out, as we went yesterday, but uh, Moles coming in for Craig on the bench. Preci, um, Ecky, Darren Holloway, Smitty and Craig. What's that, do you want to there's not a lot we can do now. We've still got an hour and yeah, 20 minutes now. And just take the keep out of the way, or you know, if the lads need anything, we can go and ask. Sort of ask them if we can help them anyway. And then in the end, you just feel like you're getting in the way, so you just disappear, go and get a cup of tea somewhere, have a read, and go back in for the game just to wish them all the best. So he was in the upper room on that bench? Yeah, and we're just there? arguing about the bench, who's going to sit where on it. We'll have fights like buggery on the bench today as well. One of them stand the up benches. Actually. Yeah. Let's have a look at them. Come on, we'll have a look at the bench. Every attack you can't get a goal. So if, it's, if you're not sure, keep it. Just keep the football and let's work him. And if we do that, we'll win it. Five a side today. Oh, ah! Come on, let's go! Fucking problems there. Fucking big problems with them two fuckers coming off and fucking turning and running at us. What did I say before the game? The three of you marking two and they come off, you go right fucking up the arse and you don't let them turn. He's coming. The good. Milosevic is good coming off strong, but when they come off and turn and run at us, that's fucking minging that. Because the three of you might as well come and fucking sit with me. Because they're just fucking coming off and that's the, that's, that's the reason we won nil down. It's simply because we haven't fucking handled them. He had a 10 or 15 or 20 minute spell there where he was fucking delightful. Fucking delightful, fucking good combination playing, sliding balls into space for runners. It was, it was good, excellent, get them on the fucking ropes. Don't switch off the runners, stay the runners. Alive on throw-ins, set plays, come on. Don't let him get out from throw-ins, don't let him get out from throw-ins because the switch is on. <laughs> come on! Oh, come on, oh, 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 mate! Get out of there, get out of the ball, eh? Oh, come on, get over oh, yeah. Come on, let's get over there. Fucking videos. Come on, get over there. It's disappointing when you lose. Well done, Alex. Well done. Play well. Well done. Well done. Well done, Dad. You wear your bollocks off, and I thought you deserved to get something out of that. Had four days of it, uh, four days now. Relax. Better if we won, but there you go. One plate. Get a drink, Bob. Well them days, well them days, well them days. Well them days we didn't get a break. Well done, Dad. Well done, Dad. Well done, Dad. I need to. I need to get more strength in the squad. I'm not, I'm, I've got to do it. By when? By yesterday. I mean, I'd love one in for Wednesday, but it's going to be difficult, isn't it? You know, you got to keep on trying. Though. 
So what? They lost to Aston Villa. But there was still a long way to go, and they were still in the middle of the table. Sometimes we leave at 6 o'clock in the morning, don't get home at 11 o'clock at night. And that's like, what, 16 hours, 17 hours? And there's 90 minutes football can make or break that day. That's football. And I'm happy with it over the moon. But as the fans left Villa Park in high spirits, no one could have dreamt what lay ahead. More footballing passions from Sunderland next week on BBC One at 10.55.